guys, and Merry Christmas. A lot of people might know who I am, but you might not, because it's been eight months, if you can believe it or not, since I was able to teach a class. I used to teach the junior age kids, and I just loved it. And so when I had the opportunity to come and uh, discuss with you guys about Advent, I was like, yeah, I want to do it. So during this Christmas season, we also uh, think about the second coming of Jesus, which is Advent. And what does Advent mean? Coming. That's right. Um, also, if you remember last week, Pastor Dan uh, discussed the first candle. And the first candle was hope. You're right. Good job. My candle this week is peace. It's also called the angel's candle. And why would it be called the angel's candle? Well, let's see. Let's look into the Bible and find out. If you want to turn and follow along, I am going to be in Luke chapter 2, which is where the Christmas story of Jesus is found. So, if you find Psalms, which is the middle of your Bible, and keep going over to the right, you'll find eventually find Matthew, and then Mark, and then Luke, and then find chapter 2. All right. So, in the same region, there were shepherds staying out in the fields, keeping watch over their flock by night. And an angel of the Lord suddenly stood before them, and the glory of the Lord flashed and shone around them, and they were terribly frightened. Can you imagine an angel from heaven coming down in front of you with a, you know, a thunderbolt flash? Wow. Of course they were going to be terrified. But the angel said to them, Do not be afraid, for behold, I bring you good news of great joy, which will be for all the people. For this day in the city of David, there has been born for you a Savior, who is Christ the Lord, the Messiah. This will be a sign to you by which you can recognize him. You'll find him wrapped in swaddling clothes and laying in a manger. Then suddenly there appeared with the angel a multitude of the heavenly host, meaning a huge angelic army. And now do you think they're afraid? Wow, you know, not just one angel, but thousands, hundreds of thousands. And they sing, glory to God in the highest, and on earth peace among men. There it is, the peace. Peace among men with whom he is well pleased. Luke 2, 8 through 14. An awesome uh, passage of scripture. But what does peace mean? You know, we think to ourselves, you know, you may have heard during this season, you know, peace on earth, just like the angel said. Uh, what else? You know, uh, peace and quiet, you know. Or, you know, we even have symbols for peace. Peace, peace out. <laughs> but what does the Bible say about peace? Uh, I have picked a few verses that kind of explain to me what peace is coming from God's point of view. The first one, Romans 15, 13. And may the God of hope, you know, the God of hope, first candle, remember last week, fill you with all joy and peace in believing through the experience of your faith that by the power of the Holy Spirit you'll be abound in hope and overflow with confidence in his promises. So, hope and peace give us confidence in God's promises. Uh, secondly, it can give us a calmness. And uh, Colossians 3.15 is the verse I picked for that. Let the peace of Christ, the inner calm of like one who walks with him daily, be the controlling factor 
in your hearts deciding and settling questions that arise. To this peace, indeed, you were called as members in one body of believers. And be thankful to God always. So, how cool is that? If we have given our lives to Jesus and asked him to be our Savior, we have the Holy Spirit in us, which helps us decide uh, answers to questions, uh, which how we should live, uh, maybe be convicted of things that we're doing wrong. And as we go through that, it can lead us into a life of peace if we follow uh, what the Holy Spirit is saying to us uh, on a daily basis. Thirdly, security. This is one of my favorite verses of the Bible, actually. Philippians 4, 7. And the peace of God, that peace which reassures the heart, that peace that transcends all understanding, it's, it, it's just a calm that doesn't even make sense to other people. Uh, you could be going through uh, some difficult time in your life, and you could just be totally fine. And people are like, how can you go through that and not be crying, not be nervous? And you can say, because I have God's peace. Another thing to think about is, how about the opposite of peace? Well, I think the opposite of peace would be war. And so, in war, there are two adversaries. Usually it's good versus evil, the hero versus an evil monster. But it also could be, on a small scale, in our own lives, it could be us and a friend, and, uh, you know, think of, of yourself in a war with your friend. You know, you don't like him, they don't like you, and then finally you get things worked out, and then you can experience that time of peace. So it's a lack of war, a lack of resistance against each other. And... You know, that's another thing to think about as we uh, think about what peace is. Um, let's light our candle. And as we look at the second candle, which is the peace candle, the angel candle, we can think about all the things that the second coming of God brings and also offers on a daily basis if we put our life in Christ. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, we just thank you for knowing that a life that is lived under you and your word is a life of peace. And we just thank you for giving us calmness we thank you for giving us confidence. We thank you for giving us security. Uh, we thank you for giving us joy. We thank you for giving us an end to conflicts in our life. We thank you for giving us direction. And we thank you for giving us calmness and security and good things. Just thank you for these things. In the name of your son, Jesus, amen. You know... So as we celebrate Advent and the peace candle, and you know, how everything revolves around Jesus, the Prince of Peace, just remember these things. Thank you. We're here for week two craft, and I hope you have fun, and I hope you have your paper that has your first Advent candle on it, because we're going to add to that, but we also have another paper to do that has a whole bunch of little sheep on it. So if you can get into your envelope, 
or your mom or dad, somebody can get in there and get out the sheet that has sheep on it and the little bag that has the candle pieces and wherever you stored your wreath that you started last time. Plus, we're going to sneak in one little extra craft because it's kind of fun and it'll be a Christmas tree ornament when you finish. There should be a red and white pipe cleaner that you're going to need this week too. Okay, let's go. Okay, for this week, pull out the sheet that looks like this. It's got the angel and the shepherds and all these sheep in it. And the top of the paper says, follow the angel's good news of peace through the flock of sheep to the shepherds. Remember, the angels had a very special message, even though it scared the shepherds at first. A very special message. So maybe you can pick a color that you want and start here with the angel. Which I'm going to give her just like a little colored dress because colored angels are so beautiful. And then here's the first word. And if you can read, you can read the verse at the same time as we're following the maze. Do not be afraid. I bring you good news of great joy that will be for all the people. Today in the town of David, a Savior has been born to you. He is Christ the Lord. This will be a sign to you. You will find a baby wrapped in cloths and lying in a manger. And there we are. We made it all the way to the sheep or to the shepherds through all those sheep. Aren't they cute little fluffy things? So that wasn't a very long craft. So we actually are sneaking in another little craft for you to do. So if you look in your craft bag, you should also find some pipe cleaners. You'll need your bag because we're going to do one more candle, one candle each week. And your little paper to put the candle on. But let's just do this other little craft first. This was kind of fun. What we're going to do is make something you can hang on your Christmas tree. And it's a candy cane looking thing out of pipe cleaners. So I thought I'd show you what it's supposed to look like in the end because sometimes if you know what you're trying to do, it kind of helps. So if you take your red and white pipe cleaners, just put them next to each other like that and give a little twist and I folded that over on the top so it doesn't come untwisted. Then you kind of slowly twist, twist. And your twist can be big or little, it doesn't matter. I never saw a candy cane rule that said it has to be a certain size. So see how as I just give it little twists, it does look like a candy cane. Just those red and white stripes. Can't eat it of course, which is a good thing because you don't want something hanging on your tree that you really want to eat. But it'll be your very own decoration to put on the Christmas tree. And there's something special about the candy cane that I'm going to tell you when we get this all finished. So see, I'm twisting, twisting, and it's coming out on the end. And then when you get to the bottom end, do the same thing, give it kind of like a little twist over. Not that it'll really come unraveled, but that'll make it stay better. So see, you should have a long stick like that, all twisted. And then, candy cane, of course, has a hook at the top. So just kind of find a place where you think it looks right. And everybody's might be different lengths, but kind of give it a little sh -sh -sh, like that. And that'll make it stay in that shape. And then that'll hang right over one of the branches of your Christmas tree. And you'll know that you made that candy cane. Now here's what I want to tell you about the candy cane. I want to read a little poem to you and talk about some of the parts. As you can see, the candy cane was made of the red and the white pipe cleaners. So the poem says, look at the candy cane. What do you see? Stripes that are red like blood shed for me. White is for my Savior who is sinless and pure. J is for Jesus, my Lord, that's for sure. Turn it around, and a staff you will see. Jesus, my shepherd, was born for me. And since we were talking about the shepherds this week, and what the angels told the shepherds, 
I thought this would be a fun craft because this is what the shepherds carried in order to take care of their sheep. And did you know that in the Bible it even tells us that Jesus is our shepherd? He's our good shepherd. And so besides the fact that if you hold it this way, is that right? There's a J for you. J is for Jesus, but he's also the good shepherd. And remember we talked in the wordless book about the red for the blood which Jesus, when he died on the cross, shed for us to pay for our sins. And the white is because Jesus was sinless. He's the only one that was sinless. So that's just a little fun craft, and you can put those on your Christmas tree. Okay, now we need, we don't need leaves this time because we already did that last time, but you can pick out one of the purple candle sticks, and I'm going to take the longest one, the longest purple one, and one yellow, and one flame, and this is not the longest one. i got to get the long one out, because the word today is the longest word that we're going to have to write on our candles. Do you remember that this candle in week two is for peace? And that's what our paper set us, showed us, is that this message was about peace. And if you were part of the Christmas program last year, when we lit the lights and said the verses together, you'll remember that part of what the angel said was peace on earth. So we need to write peace on this candle. P E A C E. There, this candle represents peace. And if you have a little space, you should have a little space where that'll fit kind of under the leaves. Put it kind of close like that. Oops, glue. Put the glue on. And hold your candle there for just a minute while it gets stuck. And then put a little glue on one yellow and one orange little shape so that this candle can shine. And peace is something that we know we can always have. Even when things are hard or there's lots of trouble, our peace doesn't come just from the fact that there's nothing going wrong outside our lives or the world. Peace comes from God inside our hearts to make us always feel that we know he is there with us and we never have to be afraid. We can have peace. So there, look at that. A hope candle, a peace candle, and next week you'll do a third, and the week after a fourth, and Christmas Eve you'll do the one last candle. I hope you had fun today.